Well, I started off by saying I was planted by a uh, Sergeant Pilcher who became very big and is now in prison, along with a lot of his colleagues, including his boss. But I was lying in bed with Yoko, not married to her, living together in England and getting some weird press because she was Japanese and I wasn't living with my Anglo-Saxon wife. And uh, two weeks before I was bust, a friend in Fleet Street called me and said, the cops are coming for you. They've got Mick and everybody and they're coming for you next because you're the loudmouth. So, but not only that, but I wasn't even smoking pot at that time. And that's for real. But I'd had, I knew that many other rockers had lived in the place before me. One morning, we're just lying there asleep. Suddenly, there's a banging on the front door. And Yoko goes to the door and uh, uh, presses the button, says, who is it? And they say, it's a message from Apple, our office. Eight o'clock in the morning. So it was a woman's voice. She opened the door and there was a woman and about five guys there. They started to push the door. And she had, they didn't say we're the police or anything. She just shut the door and ran in. There's a whole pile of people at the door. Meanwhile, there's, a, there's another one at the bedroom window by then. They'd come over a roof. I mean, this was like very well organized. And they were banging and banging. We were terrified and naked. And I was, and they kept saying, police, police. And they, did, they had plain clothes on. I thought, I don't know, cops, mafia, what is it? You know, what, what are they doing? And I said, well, I want to just put my trousers on. And, but they said, no, if you don't open it, we're going to bust the window and the door down. So I, I was still ter really terrified. And he was holding this piece of paper up. I, I was pretending to read it just to stall for time. Think, what do I do? What do, do you call a lawyer? What do you do? What do you do? Is this real? Is it, is it cops? What is it? I finally let them in. He said, all right, I've got you for obstruction of the law anyway. And the comedy was that they only had two dogs that could smell marijuana in London at that time and the dogs were late they're on another case so they had to stall for about an hour and they were running all over the house all over the place and uh, they separated us and they broke their own rules which is you're supposed to be there while they're searching but they wouldn't let me call anybody they be there while they're searching, but they were all over the place. They wouldn't let me call anybody. They wouldn't let me call the office to say I couldn't come to a press conference that I was supposed to be doing. And then finally the dogs arrived, and they'd already searched the place. And there was a room full of junk that I'd brought from my previous home that was like cameras, equipment, and everything. On the mantelpiece was a binocular case. And Pilcher, the one in prison, calls me over and says, is that your binocular case? And I think, I'm living in a basement, but I know it must be my binocular case. Uh, yeah, it's my binocular case. Then he, he says, will you look inside? I looked inside. And there's a little piece of hash, which is compressed marijuana, you know, uh, about that big. And he says, do you recognize that substance? I said, yes, it's hash, and I'm, I don't know anything about it. And subsequently, because I wasn't married to Yoko, I was terrified they were going to throw her out of the country because the press was really weird at the time. And I made a deal that if they left Yoko alone, I would plead guilty and pay a hundred pound fine, a couple hundred dollars, and that would be the end of it. I made a deal with the cop, and he dropped the obstruction charge. I made a deal with the cop and he dropped the obstruction charge and they took me to court and let, you know, and be a good boy and people in your position. I wasn't, I didn't even suspect I'd been planted then. I thought maybe the chauffeur had brought it in the case with the stuff. Years later, after they bust George, who was all, all planted but also happened to have some as well, which I told you that, mm -hmm. because those days it was open. Uh, I called George and I said, you know, I was planted, were you? He says, oh, sure. Sure, they couldn't see the stuff on the table, so they stuffed about half a pound of it in my boot in the bedroom, just to make sure of it. And that's the whole story.